We're gonna to move to our closing remarks from Debbie Herzman. Debbie is a member of the board of directors of Velodyne LIDAR and NYSource with a long distinguished career in transportation. She served on the board as well as the chairman of the board of the National Transportation Safety Board. Debbie has also served as the first chief safety officer and senior advisor to Waymo. Debbie has a bachelor's degree in political science and international studies from Virginia Tech and a master's in conflict analysis and resolution from George Mason University. Debbie, we are so pleased to welcome you this afternoon. Oh, it's so great to be here. How inspiring uh, to hear from all of these amazing women. So I'm gonna start with a quote. This chance will stand before you only once. This was said by Sandra Day O'Connor. She was the first woman to serve as a Supreme Court justice. And she was the only woman on the court for more than 10 years before she was joined by RBG. Laura and Salika are two women who understand what being the only is like. Imagine how many times they have been the only woman or the only African-American in the room but they've also risen to the top of their fields and they're embracing this challenge to be at the forefront of a fledgling industry. They're embracing the chance to define the technology, the chance to create the foundational policies. And indeed, this chance will stand before all of us only once. Today, each of the speakers that we heard, they shared how they're embracing their unique in different roles. We started with Congresswoman Debbie Dingell. She emphasized the tremendous potential of AVs, increased mobility and safety. But she was emphatic about the need for the whole of government to establish policies, laws, and regulations to accelerate the advancement of the US AV industry, which will ensure good jobs and competitiveness. She's a major player in this space. I know that because I got my start on the Hill three decades ago as an intern. I worked on the House side for seven years and on the Senate side for five years. The Hill was a fantastic place. It was like an incubator for growth and gaining knowledge. Age, gender, and experience were not barriers to my advancement. I loved my job working on transportation legislation. I was a sponge and a workaholic, and truly, it was like being in school for 12 more years. There's an old parable that if you have a job you love, you will never work a day in your life. And didn't we hear about passion from Claire when she told Leslie about her love of applying technology to solve real world problems? From founding Auto to working at Uber and NVIDIA, but she also reminded us that full autonomy is not gonna happen overnight. And while engineering is engineering, the people that you work with have a tremendous impact on how you feel about the field of engineering. And we've heard that again and again today. So it's been said, if you look at the people in your circle and you don't get inspired to grow beyond yourself, you don't have a circle, you have a cage. So look around your circle for colleagues that genuinely inspire you to be your best self. And don't be afraid to make change, as Claire mentioned. Because for me, every time I've switched roles, yes, it's been scary, but it always leveled me up. You'll never be in demand like you are today in this fast paced and growing industry. And leaders, think about the role that you can play to bring out the very best in your team because your people are your most valuable asset. We heard from engineering leaders, Nina, Amanda, Sophia, and Sonia. They showcase their diversity of thought, experiences, and expertise. They've challenged the status quo and opened up key conversations with their male colleagues. They talked about along with the scientific rigor and attention to detail, that one of the best things that you can do is to bring your authentic self to work. But this isn't just about your success, it's about your company's success. 
The 2020 Edelman Trust Survey of Investors found that diversity and inclusion data impacts investor trust and share price. So having more female engineers on the team is good for the bottom line. We heard from Allison, Anuja, Jade, and Shani about how they pivoted into opportunities in two male-dominated fields, automotive and technology. They emphasize how open and growing these fields are for applicants with diverse backgrounds, not just engineers, and reminded us not to doubt our value at an all-male table. Often we talk about being the only woman in male-dominated fields. And yes, it can be lonely at times. And who among us has not had imposter syndrome, as Laura just referenced? But let me tell you, so many men are our allies, and some of them are attending today. Men were my bosses and mentors. They gave me a hand up along the way. They very often believed in me more than I believed in myself and they carried me on their shoulders to lift me up even higher. And I'm sure that some of you can relate to my experience, but wouldn't it be amazing to have women as our sponsors and our advocates? It's all of our responsibility to help the next generation of women to succeed. And STEM is a critical starting point. In Faith's conversation with Tatiana, Ilse and Michelle, my gosh, what a special group. They made me so proud. Their brains, their curiosity, and their poise. I have no doubt that they will be our future leaders. And I think we'll all agree that, they're, that we're in good hands with them. But they encouraged more interactions with students and for women, especially those in leadership, to tell their stories. So here's what I'd say in a letter to my 11th grade self. You know how you told your dad that you would never use anything that you learned in trigonometry in real life? Well, you will. <laughs> so you may know that I spent 10 years at the National Transportation Safety Board. And when I reviewed uh, one of the first accidents that I actually launched to, it was a report about pilots who took a regional jet that they were ferrying it didn't have any passengers on it, so they were returning it to the location that it needed to be the next day. They took the aircraft to its service ceiling or the limitation for that aircraft, which was flight level 410 or 41,000 feet. And in the process of doing that, the performance of the aircraft degraded as they got into that thin air and they stalled the plane. And then they entered into a pilot induced oscillation or an aircraft pilot coupling as they were fighting the automated system that was pushing the nose down to overcome that stall. But they responded by pulling back on the controls, which kept them in a stall and ultimately flamed out both of their engines. And for those of you uh, who have engineering backgrounds and you remember your trig, yep, that's a classic sine wave. And trig was used in real life. And so if the goal is to get 50% of the engineering students to be women, then we have to fill up that pipeline because there's so much bleed off from the entry level positions to the C-suite. One way we can do that is to ensure that young girls know all about the jobs and opportunities that are available to them and help them envision themselves in those roles. I hope more young women had the chance to watch Genevieve talk with Nandita Nadia and Sarah about eliminating the hidden bias and autonomy. What an impressive group. I wanted to hear more from them and in fact from all of our speakers today. But they talked about systems that will serve everyone. Here in Silicon Valley, you may know firsthand about designing cell phones that will comfortably fit into a woman's hand, which is about an inch smaller than a man's hand. And Nandita pointed out how it was only recently that crash test dummies are truly representative of a woman's stature in automotive testing. The consequence of that failure in design resulted in testing, um, design and testing resulted in uh, the, the outcomes that female drivers had a 47% greater chance of serious injury than their male counterparts. 
And Sarah talked about the bias in detecting skin tones. These shortcomings are not just inconvenient, they're unsafe. As Nadia noticed, we can and will do better if we recognize our biases, dig into the data gaps, and ensure we have diverse stakeholders represented in decision-making. You all probably remember the movie Hidden Figures about the amazing African-American women mathematicians who were known as the human computers at NASA. They played an integral role in the space race, but their contributions weren't really recognized for decades. Let's recognize that this chance will stand before us only once. Once. You may sometimes be the only, but you are the women, and some of the men on this call too, that can influence the direction of the industry and grow the role that women will play today and in the future. Today we're reminded of our strength. Velodyne brought us several amazing hours of inspiration. For years, they've given back to the industry by hosting the World Safety Summit to share best practices and grow thought leadership in the AV space. I'm tremendously excited to join their board. Thank you to the Belladine team for building an event for women, with women, and by women. Pam, Caitlin, Mary, and Sally, you are the hidden figures of this conference. And now I'm gonna turn it back to Salika, who's been an amazing MC today. I know you're gonna to continue to speak truth to power like the rock star that you are. Wow, Debbie, thank you so much for those powerful comments. And thank you all for being with us today. I trust that all in attendance have been inspired and encouraged by the panelists that we've heard from. I wanna acknowledge our sponsors, Berkeley Lab, SAE International, PAVE Partners for Automated Vehicle Education, and Velodyne LIDAR, all their efforts in putting together this phenomenal program. We also wanna encourage our audience to check out another upcoming virtual event called Business of Automated Mobility Forum, or BAM. AUVSI and SAE have teamed up to bring us this two-day event focused on the path to profitability for companies in the UAS and AV markets. Velodyne LIDAR is also a proud sponsor of this event. So be sure to register at bam-forum.org and tune in on June 23rd and 24th for two days of information sessions, panels, and networking. From here forward, we look to continue the work that's been talked about today in our own personal journeys. The challenge ahead is to remain committed, not just to reap the benefits, but to share in the responsibility to fulfill the goals. Be dedicated, roll up your sleeves and work. See each other as partners, do all that you can to uplift women as the power forward in our industry. The possibilities are endless, the sky is the limit, and women will be there empowering the future. Take care and have a great day. Thank you all. <laughs>